Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how I built my new linear actuator vise. This build is a result of my grandma getting a new lift chair and me harvesting the old power supply and linear actuator from inside the old one. It's 18 inches wide, 10 inches tall, and can accommodate materials up to 4.5 inches thick. It has a forward reverse and momentary toggle switch integrated into the front of the bench for opening and closing. Since everyone loves to hate on my triple screw gear vise for having two handles, I decided my next vise would have none. With that being said, Let's get started with the build. I'm just getting warmed up. So this project begins over at the chop saw where I'm breaking down some one inch thick Baltic birch to 18 inches, three pieces in total. Then over at the table saw, ripping them down to 10 inches in width. The next step is gonna to be to drill the through holes through the three pieces of plywood in the exact same location in order to get the measurement I need, I need to attach the 10 inch nipple and the two elbows to each other permanently, so this distance will never change. With both 24 inch pipes temporarily installed, I can bang them against the table to even out both ends to make sure it sits flat. Now we take a measurement and we can start drilling the holes for the through holes for the three pieces of plywood. Now, I was going to go ahead and buy a 1 and 1 16 Forstner bit for this, but then I realized I have a CNC machine, so I might as well use it and save myself some money. But if you want to do this project yourself, you can pick up a 1 and 1 16 Forstner bit for about uh, $20 on Amazon or something like that. As you saw me screwing down some scrap pieces of wood to give me a right angle in the bottom left, this is my origin point and I want all three of these pieces to be the exact same. So these are kind of like a little stop block system for the CNC machine. Now that the CNC has done its thing, I can give everything a light sanding bring it over to the oscillating spindle sander and give the insides a little bit of a sanding as well, just for a little more clearance on these black pipes so they slide a little more freely. Then I can apply some contact cement to the wood and the rubber. This is the same thing I did with my triple screw gear vise and it's worked great so far. After applying the contact cement you have to wait 15 minutes for them to tack up, get a little bit dry, press them together and they will be stuck forever so don't get this alignment wrong. After taking the clamps off, I flip the pieces over so I can trim up all the rubber on the sides and then after that I can slice a little bit in the middle where the holes are and just run the knife around the edge. This doesn't have to be pretty by any means because there's really no clamping happening around there anyways. The next step was to attach the 24 inch length of 3 quarter pipe into the pipe flange. I did this by putting it in my vise and torquing it down with a pipe wrench. This connection here needs to be very tight as this will be permanent, as if the vise needs any modification later, it'll get disconnected at the elbow instead. So this next step, you're gonna see me drilling two holes in the cross piece. This was a result of basically what was a failed experiment. I thought I was gonna be able to use the existing holes in the linear actuator by basically running a piece of all thread through it heating it up and bending it around in place. Now this didn't work for me at all as I'm pretty sure the reason was my propane torch simply didn't get hot enough to make the steel malleable. It just simply snapped off. Now that that experiment failed and I was trying to get my mind on something else, I started working on the piece that supports the rear end of the pipes underneath the table. I needed to notch out a hole in the middle for the linear actuator and a two x four piece for the ribs of the table to go around. After that I applied some paste wax to all six of the holes and began a dry assembly of the vise. You really want to get both of these flanges sitting on the exact same plane, so in order to get these equal, I simply slid all the pieces to the bottom and measured up to the top of the flange. That way I could balance things out by simply giving a quarter turn here or there on either side of the vise. Next on the back side of the fixed jaw, I can mark out my center and using some Forstner bits, drill out some clearance for the back of the linear actuator. This is kind of a dome shape, so I go ahead with a bigger bit and then a smaller bit to kind of create a little dome shape inside. Then using my trim router with a half inch bullnose bit, where I can create a recess for this 3 8 inch bolt to fit, which is going to slide through the back of the linear actuator and hold it in place. 
I decided to use an old hex head shoulder bolt and just cut off the hex head and use that as a pin. In doing this I discovered my hacksaw is a completely worthless pile of sh**. So I went over to the angle grinder and finished it real quick. After a quick deburring, I installed that half inch bullnose bit from the trim router into my router table and ran this across a half inch piece of Baltic birch plywood near the end. Then I chopped it in half to create two individual brackets. Then over at the drill press, I finally decided how I was going to mount this end of the vise to the linear actuator and is simply drilling a through hole through the nipple and then another tapped hole into the end of the linear actuator. Now this is, I believe, aluminum the back of this linear actuator but it is the toughest damn thing I've ever had to tap. Maybe it was the wrong tap or the lack of cutting fluid, I don't know, but it was crazy to tap this thing. I thought I was gonna break it several times. After that, I realized I had to take the vise apart again and chop down the thickness of the top board in order to have the front jaws sitting flush with the top of the table. Now I can begin final assembly of the vise, sliding in all three pieces and then attaching the two 24 inch pipes with the flanges. These need to be torqued to the exact same distance and the bolt pattern on the front should match up with each other. Then it's on to drilling out these holes and then installing four one inch screws into each side. Now on to attaching the linear actuator to the back of the fixed jaw. You can see the bolt sits in that groove we cut out and then the two half inch pieces of plywood get screwed down to hold that in place. Two in the back, one in the front gives nice clamping pressure that'll never go anywhere. With the linear actuator going through that center clearance hole, I can lay the vise on its side and get some measurements for two side support pieces. I then cut these down to length and drill eight pocket holes in each board for easy assembly. I can then run the linear actuator to end of travel, press it up against the hole, and screw in this piece of all thread. This gets nutted in place. I can then test the operation of the vise. With the vise running smooth in and out, I can go ahead and chop off this piece of all thread, take off the nut, and install a lock nut so this sucker never comes out. Next I can mount up the power supply that came with my grandma's power lift chair. One side is the 120 volt going into the wall, the other side is the 29 volt DC which is going to go to our switch. As you can see some scrap quarter inch plywood and some screws make some nice cable clips. With that the vice build is complete minus the electronics. So here's a few overview shots of the vice before it gets mounted under the table and all this stuff is hidden forever. So to mount this vise, I first drill five holes through the front of my bench. I then come through the back with some two and a half inch pan head screws. Then I can line up the vise with the edge of the table, perfectly center it, and then give it a good kick to leave an indent so I can then drill these holes on the bench. So that takes care of mounting the vise from the front. I also want some support in the back, so I go ahead and lay it on top and mark out the location of that back spacer. I'm gonna drill through the top into the back and give it extra support later. With the vise now mounted, I can go ahead and throw my attention to mounting the switch, which I first drill a Forstner bit hole into the 2x4 on the front, as this is going to get flush mounted onto the front of my bench. I then use the jigsaw to carve out the exact rectangular shape, while marking and taking measurements along the way. Now that the switch now fits in the hole, I can go ahead and attach all of my wires. This starts with a crisscross pattern along the back of the double pull, double throw switch, which is a commonly used switch for forward and reversing. As this is not a huge motor load, we don't need to use a contactor and the switch itself should suffice. You can see my wiring diagram I'm following here. The power supply goes into the middle of the switch and then we have that crisscross pattern for forward and reversing as this is a simple motor that just requires the positive and negative to be flipped for forward and reverse. And with the switch installed, we can see it working. The vise is now complete. Thank you. 
So before I leave you with some can-crushing good times, I just want to mention that this is kind of like a proof of concept. The reason I did this so the vise only opens up to four and a half inches and it's kind of slow is because this was a free linear actuator I got. If you were going to build one of these yourself, you could absolutely use a unit that goes faster or has way more travel. It's really up to you. But I think this is a great proof of concept. And this thing is crazy strong and easily maxes out my bathroom scale during testing. Well, that sucks. What do you have to say about that?